Map and fold make sense with more than just lists. You can also use them with trees. Here's our tree type from before with leaves and nodes. These are binary trees. Suppose we wanted to map over a tree. Let's write a function to do that. Map a function f over a tree. If the tree is empty, that is, it's a leaf, there's nothing to be done. If the tree has a node with a value, a left subtree, and a right subtree, what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to return a node where we've applied the function f to the value at that node. And then we recursively map over the subtrees. Map f over l, map f over r. So that's all there is to it. Once you understand the idea of map, it's something that will suggest itself to you with many data structures, binary trees just being one of them. You could map over a queue, you could map over a stack, you could map over a graph, whatever you like. Suppose you wanted to add one to every element of a tree, you could now quickly do that with map. And that's all there is to it. So you can see how quick it can be to implement functions when you get used to this higher order style of programming. What about folds? Well, suppose we wanted to fold over a tree with an accumulator, uh, a function f to combine, operate, combine values. If we add a leaf, we'll return the accumulator. If we're at a node with a value, a left subchild and a right subchild, then let's go ahead and recursively fold over the left subtree using the existing accumulator and recursively fold over the right subtree using that accumulator and then use the function f to combine the results uh, of that value for the left subtree and the right subtree. So you could use that, for example, to sum up all the elements of a tree, just we've, like we've summed up all the elements of a list. What's a little tricky there is this now needs to take in the value at the node, the value for the left subtree, the value for the right subtree, or sums for the left subtree and right subtree, and add them all together. We can try this out with our example tree T. Remember, T is that tree that has two at the root. We could add one to t. That increases each node by one, you can see there. And we could sum up all the values in the tree, which gets us six for the original tree. Or if we take t, add one to it, and sum up all the values, and we get nine because we've added one to each of the three nodes. It's so pleasant and so nice to be able to code in this higher order way. I hope you fall in love with it soon.